Thomas Kuhn, Scientific Progress, Objectivity, and Theory Choice. Welcome. This video is a continuation of my series on various topics within the philosophy of science. This video will cover material from two essays by our old friend Thomas Kuhn. One being an excerpt from his famous text, The Structures of Scientific Revolutions, titled The Nature and Necessity of Scientific Revolutions. The second being Objectivity, Value, Judgment, and Theory Choice. If you haven't yet, I'd highly recommend you go watch my previous video on Thomas Kuhn, link below, where I discuss his conception of puzzle solving as the demarcation criteria between science and pseudoscience. I hope you enjoy. For Kuhn, the overwhelming majority of scientific practice is characterized by what he calls puzzle solving. This is the average scientist clocking in and clocking out on the daily and working on small, isolated problems within their field. The solving of such puzzles, increasing the scope and explanatory power of the theory, is the only sense in which science progresses for Kuhn. He would vehemently reject the notion that science progresses in a manner such as scientific discovery is getting closer to capital T truth. Those individuals working within a given field aren't undermining or questioning the major assumptions of their field. They take them for granted in a manner that could be characterized as dogmatic. Most, perhaps all, biologists would not entertain the concerns of someone who rejected evolution by natural selection, for instance. Nor should they. When teachers and professors instruct students in the field, they don't instruct them to question their core assumptions that they hold dear. These scientists and practitioners take the assumptions of their field, both explicit and implicit, for granted, and work to solve small puzzles they present. A failure to solve a puzzle isn't indicative of a problem with a the theory, but with the user. Just as a failure to solve a Rubik's Cube points to a shortcoming of the user, and not with the Rubik's Cube itself. These practitioners all operate within a particular paradigm. A paradigm can be described as a, quote, collection of diverse elements, ontological, epistemological, methodological, and axiological, that tells scientists what experiments to perform, what observations to make, how to modify their theories, how to make choices between competing theories and hypotheses, and so on. <laughs> the more rare part of science for Kuhn one that is markedly non-progressive, though the part that makes for much more entertaining pedagogy and storytelling, is the extraordinary or revolutionary science. This is the type of science that you read about in little blurbs in high school. Albert Einstein coming along with his unique genius and overturning Newtonian physics, offering a whole new way to view the world. This is too ahistorical in understanding the development of science and how it is practiced for Thomas Kuhn. How the paradigm shifts or revolutions in science take place is precisely the question Kuhn sets out to answer in The Nature and Necessity of Scientific Revolutions. The use of the term revolution is quite intentional by Kuhn. He sees rapid and dramatic changes in scientific paradigms as remarkably similar to rapid and dramatic changes in political and social life. He sees both as being, quote, inaugurated by a growing sense that existing institutions have ceased to adequately meet the problems posed by an environment that they have in part created. Kuhn rejects the notion, voiced by Imre Lakatos, watch my video on him, link below, that for Kuhn, paradigm changes are entirely arbitrary and irrational results of mob psychology. He also rejects the idea that scientific revolutions are simply a product of rhetorical persuasion and not related to substantive differences in competing theories. As he describes it, quote, Every individual choice between competing theories depends on a mixture of objective and subjective factors, or of shared or individual criteria. It should be made clear that for Kuhn, debates between competing paradigms always end up being circular. 
Justifying paradigm A as opposed to paradigm B in terms of paradigm A won't be effective because paradigm B doesn't accept those terms. Put simply, there's necessarily a non-rational, quote, unscientific element to paradigm or theory choice. How should we make sense of this? How are we to understand the objective and subjective factors that contribute to theory choice in science? Objective in this sense means something like values shared within a scientific community. Of these objective values, Kuhn picks out five of good science, though it should be noted that this list is not exhaustive. These values play a role in helping us choose between different scientific theories. The first is accuracy within its domain. This basically means that a theory should be able to make predictions that turn out to be true. Secondly, he highlights the importance of consistency in the theory, both internally and externally. One, a, a theory shouldn't contradict itself. Two, the theory shouldn't contradict related theories that are generally accepted within the scientific domain. Third, it should have a broad scope. That is, the logical consequences of the theory should extend beyond the initial observations, laws, theories, and sub-theories. Another way to put this is that the theory should have surplus or extra content. Fourth, a commonly held notion, scientific theories should be simple, or at least as simple as possible. For Kuhn, this means that the theory should be unifying, it should bring seemingly random and disparate phenomena into the same fold. Finally, Kuhn makes note of the importance of fruitfulness in science. As he describes this aspect himself, quote, a theory should be fruitful of new research findings. It should, that is, disclose a new phenomena or previously untold relationships among those already known. I'll note here some overlap between Kuhn and Lakatos. For more details, please watch my video on Imre Lakatos, link below. But these values, when deployed by scientists, run into two types of problems. The first being that two different scientists applying the same criteria, say accuracy, could legitimately differ in exactly how they apply said criteria, and then could come to different conclusions regarding which theory to endorse. Secondly, there's the problem of weighing different criteria in relation to another. Say theory A is more accurate than theory B, but the latter is more consistent. As Kuhn describes it, quote, perhaps they interpret simplicity differently or have different convictions about the range of fields with which the consistency criterion must be met. Perhaps they agree about these matters, but differ about the relative weights to be accorded to these or to the other criteria when several are deployed together. Beyond these shared or objective criteria that influence theory choice, there's the subjective factors that influence theory choice as well. These would be more like personality dispositions or cultural influences that would make one more open to one theory over another. Perhaps one scientist personally valuing originality and creativity more than other scientists would make them more likely to take a risk and jump aboard a potentially paradigm-shifting theory. As for cultural influences, among others, Kuhn cites the influence that German Romanticism had in predisposing those influenced by it into accepting the conservation of energy theory. Kuhn's point here, to be explicitly clear, isn't that theory choice is an irrational or arbitrary choice dictated by culture and individual or mob psychology. It's only that theory choice is determined by a mixture of both these objective and subjective factors. The latter he sees as being an under-theorized aspect which explains his emphasis on it. He rejects the notion that we could develop some sort of algorithm that could do our theory choice for us. There's not some universal criteria we could use to do our theory choice, just as we don't have a computer that could tell us how to organize socially and politically. A quick recap. For Kuhn, science is not progressive in the sense folks often talk about it in. Where most science fanboys talk about scientific progress as getting us closer to truth, Kuhn vehemently rejects this. While the puzzle-solving activity of scientists grows or accumulates, with the solving of more and more puzzles, and this would be considered progress for Kuhn, scientific revolutions for Kuhn are objectively non-progressive. They come along and flip over the table, so to speak. He would regard the histories we tell about new paradigms building on older ones 
is fanciful pedagogy that ignores the actual messiness and complexity they try to describe. Now, while some have, accurately mind you, described Kuhn as a kind of relativist, he certainly is. That being said, Kuhn doesn't wholly reject the notion of scientific objectivity. A better way to put it would be that he displaces scientific objectivity. He rejects the idea that objectivity lies in some one-to-one -one correspondence between a scientific theory and the world. He advocates the notion that objectivity is found in particular scientific communities in intersubjective agreement and shared values. Lastly, theory choice, that is, choosing between competing paradigms, isn't some wholly rational or objective process. While there are criteria or values that are objective in the sense that they're shared among scientists, we have no way to universally or objectively quantify those values, weigh them against each other, and choose the best theory. This doesn't even mention the social and historical situatedness that will channel us towards one theory over another. While this conception of science has and will continue to ruffle the feathers of some, it is very persuasive and has had vast influence within the philosophy of science discourse. Interestingly enough, while Kuhn can accurately be described as a kind of relativist, in actuality he is urging us to have a materialistic and down-to-earth conception of what scientists are actually doing when they do science. If we're going to understand what science is, we should look at how scientists behave. We should look at them as an object of inquiry. Many people when thinking about science, do so in a very unscientific manner. We have to observe the scientists. Like, seriously, look at them. If you observe the scientists, you'll very likely see that science is a mode of community life. It is a social institution people participate in. Just as other modes of community life, such as political structures or the choice between coffee and tea, are not the product of wholly rational decisions, so, too, theory choice in science is not a wholly rational endeavor. I'd like to say thanks for watching. Special thanks to my patron, Ryan Lindsay. Your support means more to me than I can express with words. If you'd like to become a patron yourself and support the future production of these videos, support me on Patreon. Links below. Also, check me out on Facebook and Instagram for additional content. Again, Thanks for watching.